You think you know him, but you don't. How can you say that? Because I thought I knew him, and I didn't. And I'm here preaching to you about him tonight. The Holy Ghost is God in the earth today and you walk with him by saying words my name is Andrew Hemstrott thank you for joining us if this is your first time here make sure you subscribe and if this isn't your first time here and these messages are blessing you then consider becoming a partner with us I'm going to be saying some things tonight that a lot of people won't like but I've been instructed to say them and to say them boldly lots of times I'll be instructed to say things but he told me to say these things boldly say say them boldly, say them boldly. Acts chapter 10 verse 35 but in every nation he that fears him now fear we know we've gone down this road many times fear can also mean what worship mm -hmm. he that worships him and works righteousness well i don't really i'm not going to take the time tonight but we know that in romans chapter 10 the righteousness of god is the righteousness of faith and the righteousness of faith speaks what does it say it says the word so if you want to be in the righteousness of god or working say working working the righteousness of god you're going to be speaking the word in faith Does this make sense i have a whole bunch of other messages on that but that's what this that's what that means so if somebody will worship god and speak his word in faith what's it say will happen he is accepted with him with him who with him god well if i could get people to do these two simple things to worship god say worship God, worship God and speak in agreement with his word and not out of agreement with his word mm -hmm. then they would be accepted with him do you have a problem with that no. well how are you going to get people accepted with God speak his word and worship him mm -hmm. in every nation not respecter of persons mm -hmm. are you here so accepted with God God who the one that they worship and the one they speak in agreement with it doesn't matter who you are if you're worshiping God and speaking in agreement with his word you will be accepted with him mm -hmm. this is good news I'm preaching the good news Amen. but you must know who it is that you're worshiping and speaking in agreement with well we know the word was spoken forth breathed out by the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. who is God right all the word so if I'm speaking in agreement with the word who am I speaking in agreement with God the Holy Ghost you must know who he is to worship him does that make sense I mean I'm not making a leap here if you're gonna worship God you need to know who he God is well you go to most places and they don't worship the Holy Ghost do they no. could they possibly be fulfilling this verse of Scripture if it's the Holy Ghost that verse of Scripture is talking about no, no. so they are are they accepted with him not in the way they should be we know whom we worship John 4 24 says God is a spirit and they that worship him the Holy Ghost is God and the Holy Ghost is a spirit mm -hmm. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him you must know who you worship in order to worship him mm -hmm. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth are you here in this the Holy Ghost God the one we're talking about is no respecter of persons if you worship him 
and speak in agreement with his word you are accepted with him you're pleasing him mm -hmm. Romans chapter 15 let's look at verse 16 that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles what does Gentiles mean well wait, if you're talking about Jewish people the Gentiles meant everybody else mm -hmm. and basically it means without God mm -hmm. because if you were a Jew in that day and you had a covenant with God you were the only one with God right. right everybody else may think they have God but they don't mm -hmm. so Gentile that's what Gentiles means literally without God mm -hmm. are you here yeah. ministering the gospel of God or the good news of God that the offering up of the Gentiles people without God mm -hmm. might be acceptable now what do we say they that worship God and work righteousness are accepted with God here it says ministering the gospel of God that the offering up of the Gentiles those without God might be acceptable being sanctified by who the Holy, the Holy Ghost so who does this the Holy Ghost who is God so somehow the Gentiles are gonna have to come into worshiping God the Holy Ghost and working righteousness to be made acceptable mm -hmm. are you here yes. you can see why I stress this so much sanctified by and through the Holy Ghost or in a relationship with the Holy Ghost or walking with the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. that's how you become accepted are you getting this does it say that offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable or made acceptable being sanctified by the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. well not the whole not the Holy Ghost as in a power the Holy Ghost we know is a person so it has to be through a relationship with the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. knowing him as God and if you know him as God you're gonna worship him as God are you here sounds a little foreign doesn't it to most religious people's ears the things I'm saying right now a little bit irritating to some people you know some of you need to be irritated you've been living in that little world of yours for so long you need to come out and start walking with the Living God I'm telling you we know almost nothing about the Holy Ghost and yet scripture after scripture tells us that he's the one we're supposed to be worshiping and walking with and being accepted with and yet we know almost nothing about him now a lot of us may know some things about his anointing or his gifts and all of those people all of those people who know something about the gifts and the anointings we all think that they're the greatest thing ever but the reality is they still know almost nothing about him I don't care listen I don't care how much you know about the anointing and the gifts of the Spirit it's still not him it's just his gifts you just got good at using the gifts of the anointing we know almost nothing frankly because of our bad doctrine about the Holy Ghost who is the Living God who's in the earth mm -hmm. you think you know him but you don't if you just know an anointing or a gift or every once in a while you know a gift will come on you you have a word of wisdom or tongue or interpretation I know I've functioned in many of the gifts of the Spirit and it's not him mm -hmm. do you understand mm -hmm. I know the anointing I know the movement of the Spirit but that's a movement of an anointing and a gift it's not him well how do you know it's not him because I've moved in all of those things and I've been worshiping him and knowing him you think you know him but you don't how can you say that because I thought I knew him and I didn't and I'm here preaching to you about him tonight let's just look at a couple things here you all right with this 
well I know the anointing I know the gifts I have the gift I have this gift or that gift the gift of healing and the discerning of spirits and I know and I know the tongues and interpretation of tongues and I'm functioning in them all the time do you worship the Holy Ghost as the Living God well no I would never worship the Holy Ghost you don't know him if you knew him you would worship him imagine God himself revealing himself to you and you don't worship him I'm not saying worship the gifts that would be stupid that's not what I'm talking about that's what you think I'm talking that is not what I'm talking about you don't know him all right I think I got my point across John chapter 16 do we suppose Jesus knew him did Jesus know the Holy Ghost yes. remember the Holy Ghost came on him and he was led by the Holy Ghost into the wilderness he was following the Holy Ghost and he learned about the Holy Ghost and then he said the Spirit of the Lord is on me because he anointed me mm -hmm. he knew the Holy Ghost did Jesus know the Holy Ghost yes so imagine if you will Jesus knowing the Holy Ghost as a person mm -hmm. can you imagine this yes. just follow me here for a second John chapter 16 verse 7 nevertheless I tell you the truth it's expedient for you that I go away for if I go not away the comforter will not come unto you but if I depart I will send him unto you now we have an idea religiously of this right here that Jesus is just giving them some information maybe through prophecy or something about the coming Holy Ghost again do you suppose he knew the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. do you suppose he had a relationship with the Holy Ghost this is coming from relationship Jesus knew the Holy Ghost would have nothing to do with it unless he went away mm -hmm. he knew the Holy Ghost you ever know somebody mm -hmm. let's say somebody doesn't like turkey and what are you serving turkey are they gonna come to the meal you be like I know them they're not gonna come mm -hmm. this may be a, a bad illustration but you understand what I'm talking about I know that person they're not going to come unless this happens someone that has a house full of dogs I'm not talking about anybody in particular <laughs> maybe they've got some mean dogs some smelly dogs some flea bitten dogs I'm not gonna go visit them unless they do something with the dogs I'm not going in the house unless they put the dogs away and I don't mean put them away I mean you know put them out something <laughs> or do I I don't know <laughs> do you understand some people know me that I'm not going there unless you put Fido away are you here that's all that's what this is what I'm saying I'm trying to get this across if we if we know that Jesus knew the Holy Ghost he knew the Holy Ghost wouldn't do th certain things and he would do certain things depending on certain things nevertheless I tell you the truth it's expedient for you that I go away if I don't go away the Holy Ghost isn't gonna come are you here now mm -hmm. and what they, the disciples didn't know was when Jesus said when I go away there was a whole lot going on in that statement meaning not I'm just gonna go away but I'm literally gonna have sacrificially go bear your sins because if I don't sacrificially go bear your sins he won't come to you because he's not coming in some filthy place filled with dogs and fleas so that was probably a better better illustration than I thought about it right mm -hmm. if I don't go away meaning if I don't go and sacrificially go away and right ra ra be raised from the dead and sit down mm -hmm. say sit down, down he won't come he must have known the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. he knew him the Holy Ghost I hope you that you're still on board here talking about the Holy Ghost God in the earth today that you walk with by saying words you worship him he's God and you speak in agreement with his word which is working righteousness right mm 
second corinthians chapter 3 verse 16 nevertheless when it shall turn to the lord the veil shall be taken away now a veil is what a veil is something that you can't see behind that's what it's there for so there's something behind the veil well if it was so obvious why even have a veil on right mm -hmm. so here we go nevertheless when it shall turn to the Lord the veil shall be taken away now the Lord is mm -hmm. remove the veil mm -hmm. not what everybody was expecting <laughs> now the Lord is that spirit what spirit now Holy Ghost and where the Spirit of the Lord is or where the Spirit is Lord there is Liberty where the Spirit isn't Lord then there isn't the kind of Liberty that there should be you're still on the other side of the veil well everybody goes oh well then the Spirit is Jesus Jesus never turned into the Spirit the Holy Ghost is not Jesus and Jesus is not the Holy Ghost this verse of scripture is talking about the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. so this is not Jesus when the veil is taken away and we go behind the veil who is there the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost only he's the only part of the Godhead in the earth today it's part of what I preach on all the time I'm removing the veil as we speak this week I was asking the Holy Ghost do you really want me to bring people in here in where you say in this room of worshiping the Holy Ghost behind the veil where they see him because when they come here there's no going back it destroys all that religious thinking Right? I know the answer to it do you really want me to go but I my, I, my words are weighted do you really want me to bring people in here mm -hmm. because when they come in they can't go back and in many ways when they begin to see him the Holy Ghost it not only ruins their doctrines and stuff like that but it, it ruins them they're just they they can't do anything else but get more of him mm -hmm. we go from glory to glory by him you see what I'm saying yes. and he says yes bring them into the worship of me say bring them, bring them. Into, into the worship, the worship. Of, me. of me and these words are gonna go all of, all over the earth and people are beginning to worship him as the living God he says yes bring them into the worship of me a billion people they can't know the real Jesus without me so you have to have the Holy Ghost to know who the real Jesus is your Jesus is fake you have a fake Jesus well you can't say that I can say that because the Holy Ghost is the one who reveals Jesus and if you're walking around with your fake Jesus and you say that I can't worship the Holy Ghost somebody's at an impasse here mm -hmm. I've walked with fake Jesus for years now was it necessarily fake? no I knew some word I, I'm not I'm not saying that you aren't saved I'm not saying those things but you're going to have to put some of those things aside to come and really know who the real Jesus is you have to know the real Holy Ghost mm -hmm. that's why I said earlier some of these things I say are gonna irritate people they need to be irritated is this fun yet and I told you I need to say it simply and boldly your Jesus is fake there's a fake Jesus there's a real Jesus there's a religious Jesus and then there's the actual Jesus actual Jesus is not in the earth right now he's seated in heaven and they sent real Holy Ghost Amen. the person and you don't worship him and you want to get mad at me I'm not angry I'm just saying things boldly sometimes it's the bold word of God that breaks the yoke and then the Holy Ghost said 
how far are you willing to go with me in this how far are you willing to go with me in this let's just assume that the Holy Ghost is God he's a person he's in the earth how far are you willing to go with him in this in what in this thing called Holy Ghost worship and walking in righteousness fearing the Lord and working how far are you willing to go and you know I, I remember so many times people going all the way I want to go all the way you know where they went all the way out the door <laughs> bring up a little something to make some uncomfortable are you gonna go all the way how far do you think this goes I tell you it goes all the way but it also goes to the where Jesus returns mm -hmm. so how far are you willing to go how far are you willing to go with me in this because I'm intending to go all the way yeah. Holy Ghost only he's the only part of the Godhead in the earth today now I've heard other people people that I love and respect very much they have said the same thing almost in passing the Holy Ghost is the only part of the Godhead in the earth today but then you know you look at much of their other preaching and doctrine and stuff and it doesn't support that they don't go all the way with it. are you here how far are you willing to go with the Holy Ghost as God in the earth as your God remember when the veil's taken away now the Lord is that spirit well what about Jesus you think you're gonna somehow offend Jesus by following the spirit that he sent to you Amen. you're offending him by not following the spirit that he sent Amen. you're disobedient mm -hmm. you rather have a fake Jesus than the real one who's not here so how far are you willing to go the Holy Ghost only God in the earth today worshiping him working righteousness those both go very deep so how far are you willing to go with me the Holy Ghost I will take you there I am the only one who can take you there can you hear that the Holy Ghost says I am the only one who can take you there where's there any and everywhere you need and want to be all things please hear all things shall be thine if you will learn to worship him and speak his word all things shall be thine if you worship me now I need to cover something right here are you okay with this so far yes. the devil is not God of the earth yeah but what about that verse of scripture I'm gonna read it right now where it says that Satan is the God of the world what about it what about it I just said the devil is not the God of the earth is that you know and I, you know what's so bothering to me is so many religious people want to do that they want to go the devil he's in control of everything he's the God of this world and they think they're quoting this scripture he's the God of the world don't 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 get up in his business or you sell your soul to him and he'll make you famous the devil is not the God of the earth second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4 in whom the God of this world well right there it says all right there see see pastor you're wrong in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not whose minds did he blind those that believe not now this word world here the God of this world the word the word world is translated in half of the translations I looked up mm -hmm. I looked up as many as I could find half the translations say world the other half say age the God of this age and then I looked up the Greek word the Greek word comes from the root word eon you know what an eon means it means a time frame so or an age it really should be age mm -hmm. or this world age mm -hmm. but it doesn't ever mean earth the devil is not the God of the world or the earth say the devil, the devil 
is not the God of the earth he never became God he's a falling fallen angel right so let's look at this number one he is not God got a problem with that the devil is not God he wants to be God Isaiah 14 verse 14 I will ascend above the heights of the clouds I will be like the Most High yet thou shalt be brought down to hell We're talking about the devil right he said in his heart I will be like the Most High say like, like. did it say he would be the Most High no. is it even possible for him to be the Most High no so he is not God number one he wants to be as you can see right there he said out of his own mouth I will be like that's what he wants to be like that's what he presents himself to people that he's like God the Most High number two as we just read there he's the God of this age to unbelievers he pretends listen he pretends to be like God to unbelievers is he God no. no in fact as soon as they become believers believers have authority over him mm -hmm. at any hour of any day mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus they put him under their feet right. not very godlike is it to be put under somebody's feet right. any believer every believer has authority over him they simply have to say get thee behind me Satan yes. because he's not God and he's not God get this straight he's not God of the world he's not God he's only God he only pretends to be God in the un to unbelievers so why can he act like God to all of the believers because he's deceiving them into thinking this are you here and I'm exposing it Amen. he's not God Amen. the Holy Ghost is God Amen. so if the Holy Ghost is God do you suppose the devil knows the Holy Ghost is God who does the devil want to be like like the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. all right I think you're ready for this Luke chapter 4 verse 1 and Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness who was Jesus being led by the Holy Ghost. himself no was Jesus being full of himself no Holy Ghost and he began to know the Holy Ghost right and let's look down at verse 5 and the devil taking him up into a high mountain showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time now that word world there does mean earth mm -hmm. that doesn't mean eon like the other one said so he showed Jesus all the kingdoms of the world he showed him the world the earth and the kingdoms and the cities all of that stuff are you here yes in a moment of time and the devil said unto him all this power will I give thee and the glory of them for that is delivered unto me and whomsoever I will give it if thou wilt therefore worship me all shall be thine if you worship me all shall be thine well number one he doesn't have it to give it's not his you suppose Jesus was confused by this well he wasn't look verse 8 and Jesus answered and said unto him get thee behind me Satan that's exactly what I said the believe that the believer has to do right. get thee behind me Satan for it is written thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve now he didn't correct the devil on the kingdoms and the the glory and the power or even that it was given through worship mm -hmm. it was who you worshiped to get it so the devil said all this will I give it to you if you worship me all shall be thine it's next to laughable he can't give it it's not his 
this here that the devil was saying is the dominion of the Holy Ghost he was trying to act like God mm -hmm. he was trying to get Jesus to worship him so that he could give him stuff so that he could act like God act like who act like the Holy Ghost that's the dominion of the Holy Ghost if you worship him all shall be thine if you remember earlier in this message I said that's what the Holy Ghost says to you if you worship him all shall be thine is the devil the Holy Ghost no. he wishes mm -hmm. he tries to act like it but it's not even close not even close now Jesus obviously wasn't thrown by this little display of self-exalted grandeur that the devil was trying to do and to say I have this glory he was trying to take glo the glory that is God's onto himself mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. by saying I'll give this to you which means I must have it I only need one verse of scripture to prove him wrong say one verse first Timothy chapter 6 verse 17 charge them that are rich in this what world that they be not high mind now why would they believers be rich in this world if the devil was the only one who the devil was the only one who could give it to them charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches but in the living God who's that Holy Ghost who gives us richly all things to enjoy this part of the Bible says that it's the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy one verse of Scripture if the living God could possibly do that then that makes that other thing that the devil was saying false mm -hmm. it's a lie because mm -hmm. the devil said all this power and glory will I give you because it's been given to me Ooh, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain trust not in uncertain riches but in the living God Holy Ghost who gives us richly all things to enjoy is that a scripture mm -hmm. yeah. who is the living God Holy Ghost who wrote that verse of scripture holy ghost. holy ghost is the holy ghost a liar no. he's the spirit of truth it's one of his names he can't say anything but the truth mm -hmm. that's the truth is the devil a liar yeah. yes he's called the father of lies meaning he was the inventor of it who are you going to believe the devil who says he has all this power or the Holy Ghost who specifically says I'll give you all of these things Amen. living God Holy Ghost so who's got the goods Holy Ghost. <laughs> Holy Ghost has got the goods if the Holy Ghost has the goods the devil doesn't have the goods and what he said is a lie and your religious thinking has been keeping you in bondage to that Amen. now that's one verse of scripture that's really all you needed would you like a second one Daniel chapter 4 verse 25 that they shall drive thee from men and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field and they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen and they and shall wet thee with the dew of heaven and seven times shall pass over thee till thou know that the most high rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomsoever he will who rules in the kingdom of man and gives it to whomsoever he will the devil remember the devil said that to Jesus and Jesus wouldn't have been tempted by it if the devil wasn't telling the truth I am so tired of that lame and stupid excuse and interpretation that somehow Jesus was tempted by that lie of the devil he was testing him not tempting him with it Jesus knew da Daniel chapter 4 mm -hmm. Jesus knew Isaiah he said get thee behind me thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve that's how you get the power 
that's how you get the glory that's how you get the kingdoms because he's the one the most high that's able to give mm -hmm. where are you going with this brother I'm trying to walk you up to something are we getting this yes. is that an old doctrine that needed to die yeah if you worship the Holy Ghost all things shall be thine the devil was just trying to put himself in the place of the Holy Ghost because he wanted to be like the Most High God but the truth is still there if you worship him all shall be thine Amen. say if I worship him, I worship him all, shall be thine. all shall be thine do you know that about the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. yes. he's the Most High it's through the vehicle of worship that he gets things to you he who he the Holy Ghost it's through the vehicle of worship that he gets things to you thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve if you don't go through the worship of the Lord your God you won't even know who you're serving you won't know the God that you're supposed to serve and he won't be able to get the things to you and he is the only one who can take you where you need to go he will take you there he will give you all things all the revelation you need all the ability you need all the resources you listen all the resources you need will come to you through the vehicle of worshiping the Lord your God and him only shall you serve how far are you willing to go fearing the Lord worshiping the Lord and working righteousness part of this message we're taking back what the devil tried to steal and frankly has stolen from the church the glory that was and belongs to the Holy Ghost right is the devil a thief he was trying to steal and did frankly for thousands of years the glory that belonged to the Holy Ghost because when you worship him he gives you all things mm -hmm. say when I worship him, I worship he, him. Gives me all things. he gives me all things it's who he is living God richly giving you all things mm -hmm. and there's a glory in that well you can't know him or serve him without worshiping him and I know I'm irritating a lot of people because they don't worship the Holy Ghost well give it a go as, as soon as you know that he is God there's nothing there should be nothing holding nothing nothing, nothing holding you back from worshiping him he's the most high God he's the living God he's the only God in the earth today you're not walking around with anybody else and you can't know or serve him correctly without worshiping him when you worship him something changes in you the veil is taken away use of the words I worship you Holy Ghost removes the veil say use of the words, of the words. I worship you, I worship you. Holy, Ghost Holy Ghost removes the veil and then we walk in liberties that we couldn't even see before so learn to worship him the Holy Ghost and learn to work righteousness which is speaking in agreement with his word and you shall be accepted and you shall be approved and you shall be pleasing to the Most High God who will begin to do things for you and great things shall move in your direction things you didn't even know were there or possible but they're coming to you right now says the Spirit of God as you continue to face your face towards me and be changed by my glory my glory my glory from one to the next and to the next these are great days to be alive and we worship you Holy Ghost we thank you for it in Jesus name Amen, amen. if you have a tithe or an offering hold it in your hand Say this after me, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost I worship God you. I thank you that I am being increased from glory to glory, and that all things are coming to me as I worship you 
in Jesus' name, amen. The Father is in heaven, Jesus at his right hand. Holy Ghost, your God in the earth today.